It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in Silicon Valley at the Anita Borg Institute Women of Vision Awards at the Santa Clara uh, Convention Center. We're really excited to come down, talk to some of the, uh, the guests, the award winners, as well as some of the folks from Anita Borg. So we're really psyched for this segment to be joined by Elizabeth Ames, the VP, Strategic Marketing and Alliances. Welcome. Thank you, I'm delighted that you're here and I'm delighted to be talking to you. Absolutely, so uh, Anita Borg's giving out some great awards, you're giving out Women of Vision Awards, we just talked to some of the student um, award winners, but you're also giving away a top company award. Talk a little bit about that program. Yeah, that program is really set up to look at quantitative metrics. So what we're looking at is, what is the representation of women at the entry level, the mid level, the senior level, executive level, in technical roles um, within companies, and the percent of women that they're bringing in and they're recruiting, and also their promotion. Um, and so we score quantitatively, um, we add up all of those scores, and we announce a winner. And this year we also announced for the first time a uh, leadership index of companies, and there's 12 companies on that leadership index. And so do you just query a broad uh, range of companies, or do they apply to be part of the program, or how, how do you select which companies you're drawing data from? You know, companies choose to participate. Okay. Um, and so I would like to say that there were 35 companies that participated this year, and I think all 35 deserve a round of thank applause. You, you. Um, because, you know, quite frankly, there are a lot of companies out there that aren't willing to talk about what they're doing right. or or share their numbers and, and really be, you know, quantitative and think about it and really understand where they are. Right. So, so then you give them, I mean, kind of what's the process? Do you go through publicly available information? They fill out a form? I mean, how do you, and, and what are some of the metrics that you guys are, are pulling data around? Yeah, that's a really great question. They submit data to us. Um, that data is all handled confidentially. That's part of the reason that they're willing to do that. Right. The metrics that we look at are um, the percent of women at entry, mid, senior, and executive level in their technical organization organizations, we give them very specific definitions of uh, technical and what that means so that they're all measuring the same type of technical okay. workers. Um, and we give them definition of what is entry level, what's mid, what's senior executive, so that we're really comparing apples to apples. Okay, and then you have some type of a scoring mechanism, you add up the numbers and from that you, uh, you give an award. Yeah, we use a, a widely accepted um, statistical methodology called Z-scores. They get a Z-score for every single metric. We sum up the Z-scores, the one with the top, uh, with the highest score is the winner. The ones that are on the leadership index are the companies that were above the mean. Okay. Um, so they're top performers within the industry. Okay, and then do you aggregate the data and deliver it back, like, you know, kind of typical best practices for a survey so people can see, you know, here's your score, here's the mean, or yes. here's the average? Yes, we do. We actually spend time reporting back with every single one of the companies. We show them how they scored on every metric against the industry mean and also against um, higher performing companies. Um, and we help guide them in terms of the things that they might want to consider working on. Okay. So highlight what a good company looks like. Where are they scoring? Hi, how, how, how does what they do get reflected in not only their score, but actually being the type of company that you guys are trying to encourage? Yeah, you know, that's a great question because really the best companies, they're scoring significantly higher than the industry mean. Um, so what you see a lot of times is you see a total number, 21% of women in technical roles within the U.S. Um, but the best companies, they're at 30 or over 30% of women in their technical workforce. And usually Usually those companies see a pretty consistent performance from entry level all the way through executive level. It might not be 30% all the way through, but it gets pretty close for those top companies. Whereas in the industry mean, what you see is you see a significant fall off from in entry level all the way through to executive level. So um, the percentage of women at the entry level is around 25%, but the percentage of women at the executive level is closer to 12 or 13%. So you literally have a fall off of 50%, right? And, and we know from research that the, that fall off is really why women leave and not only do they leave those companies but they leave the industry right right so 13 companies above the mean out of 35 that means there was a lot that weren't doing so well 
but they volunteered to participate. So when you yeah. communicate back to those companies, what's the reaction when you say, mm, you thought you were doing okay, that's why you put your thing in, but we got, you know, not bad news. Are they receptive? Are they looking for ways to get better? What's kind of their recep the, the reception to the data? You know, for a lot of these companies, some of them are participating because they, they want to benchmark where they are. Okay. And they want to understand where they are relative to the industry. So this is really great information for them. And, you know, for almost every company that participates, there is something that they're doing well on. There is some bright spot. And, you know, for all of them, there's probably areas that they can work on, whether they're on the leadership index or they're not on the leadership right, index. Right. I mean, nobody's completely cracked the code. We're not at 50-50. We all got lots of work right, to do. Right, right. Okay, good. And so um, talk about trends. Uh, have you been doing this for a while? What, what, within the aggregate of the data, what are some of the things you can report back that you guys are seeing, trends, changes, uh, encouraging things? Well, you know, sort of, I, I refer to this as the good news and the bad news all at once. Um, while we saw an absolute increase in women from 2013 to 2014 in technical roles, um, it didn't change the industry per percentage. Um, we're still stuck at 21%. And to be honest with you, that's the number that we fed at for four years. So one could look at that and say, oh, four years and we're stuck at 21%. One could also say, well, at least it's stable and it's not going backwards, so we have something to work work with here to right, move forward. Right. It's hard to move that industry per percentage, but you know, really, that's what we're after. We right. really want to move that industry percentage. Right. Well, do you cover it all? Because um, there are women in technical firms that aren't necessarily in technical roles, Because and that's something we cover a lot. There's a lot of jobs to do at Google. There's a lot of jobs to do at Facebook and at Yahoo and, and on and on and on that aren't necessarily CS-based jobs. Do you look yeah. at those as well as part of the, the process in terms of their women in tech, they're just not in the tech tech. You know, we really focus on women in technical roles. Okay. So while there may be women who have CS degrees that are in marketing or, you know, whatever, some other department within um, these companies, we don't actually count them in this case. We're really looking for women that are doing technical work, that they're uh, in technical jobs. That really is our mission to increase that, that percentage, that okay. number. Great. So we'll get to the last word. Um, you, Anita Borg does a lot of great stuff. We went to our first Grace Hopper Celebration on Women in Computing last year. It was yeah. uh, eye-opening. We hope to go back again. What are some of the other initiatives that Anita Borg is doing to help this cause? Oh, well, we have quite a few things. Um, we have a fabulous um, uh, net online network for technical women called Sisters. It's existed for quite a long time, and it's a global online network. Um, I think we have about seven or 8,000 women in that network around the world. Okay. Um, it's really kind of a great mutual support kind of thing for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a program that we launched this year called ABI.local, which is location-based communities. We have one in New York that's up and running. Um, they do all kinds of events in their local area, including a GHC1 which is sort of a one-day version of a, of a mini Grace Hopper. Um, and we'll be um, launching other cities this year, five other cities in the U.S., including Boston, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, Austin, oh, Washington, D.C. So mini, mini Grace Hoppers. Then. Sort of, yeah. Okay. Like, okay. well, local communities that can put on different events. Okay. And, and little one-day Grace Hoppers are kind of one of that, one-day okay. GHCs. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Elizabeth, thanks for taking a minute. Congratulations on the awards tonight. Uh, really a fantastic event. Thank you so much. We're really glad you're here. Absolutely. So I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground with Elizabeth Ames from the Anita Borg Institute. It's the Anita Borg Institute Women of Vision Awards here in Silicon Valley. If you want to know how your company's doing, are you doing a good job, reach out to Elizabeth, get involved in the survey. If Even if you're not doing a good job, as you said, you can get benchmarked and do a better job next year. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.